All right, today we're going to be talking about uh, the vector cross product. Um, there are a couple of ways of multiplying vectors. Uh, the simplest way is if you had a vector like you had a, you had a car going and uh, it was going at uh, 20 meters per second. Um, if it was going twice as fast, um, you know, that's, that's our velocity v is 20 meters per second. If it's going twice as fast, then 2v is just uh, 2 times 20 meters per second, uh, which is 40 meters per second, which is in the direction of the original uh, velocity. All right, so that's multiplying a vector times a scalar, and that's pretty straightforward. Next, we had uh, the vector dot product, and we used this when we did energy. Um, for instance, um, if you had uh, some sort of uh, block like this being pulled across a surface, let's say it's a frictionless surface, and there's a force F like that, and, uh, and let's see, I pulled this thing, uh, and it displaced, uh, I don't know how far did it displace. It displaced delta X, right? We'll call that a vector delta X. Um, and this is a vector two force. Um, to figure out how much work that was done, we would say, you know, the work equals F dot uh, delta X, right? Um, so, um, the result of a vector dot product was a scalar. In this case, it was energy. And what we wanted to know is how much force was in the direction of the displacement. So, uh, we would take this and we would find uh, FX, and there, this would be some angle theta, uh, this force vector could be broken into its X and Y components. Here's FY, right? But only the component that is pushing in the direction of the displacement uh, does work. So we would say that this was uh, F times the cosine of theta, because FX is F cosine theta, uh, times uh, delta X. And uh, that would give us uh, the work that was done. Um, that's the vector dot product. Well, today uh, we're going to be talking about the vector cross product. And um, there are times when we want to know when two vectors are at right angles to each other, and we only want to multiply the components that are at right angles to each other. Um, and in physics, this comes up in a couple of ways. Um, with rotation, it's going to come up with torque. And then later we're going to see angular momentum. Uh, but it also comes up in magnetism, in rotation. If we want to f uh, determine um, whether something is going to have an angular acceleration, um, we need to apply a torque to it. Um, so like if I wanted to open this book, I would have to apply a torque to change the angular acceleration of, of the, the, uh, the opening flap here. Um, it starts at zero and it's going to accelerate to a non-zero value. Um, now, if I apply a force in the direction of the hinge, um, it doesn't rotate, right? I have to apply a force at right angles to the to the uh, position vector, which starts at the hinge and goes like this. If I apply a force at right angles, it will cause an angular acceleration. We call that a torque. With torque, we only want to know how much force is at right angles to the position vector. And uh, we're going to multiply those together. Um, so um, the vector cross product, which is just a mathematical operation, if I have two vectors A and B, like that, um, we say that A cross B, now this, this isn't times. I know that's a symbol we've use. Uh, been using for times for years. Um, but this actually uh, is the cross product. It's a, it's a vector operation. And the result is going to be another vector C. I'll call that C anyways. Another vector. Um, the magnitude of C is going to equal the right angle component of A times B, where I take the right angle component of A relative to B, multiply them together. If this was... Uh, an angle theta, right? This is, uh, we, I might call this uh, 
a perpendicular and uh, this component would be a parallel all right now the a parallel um, is not something we're interested in in this case we only want to know what is the perpendicular component a perpendicular all right well in that case if I knew this angle theta the perpendicular component is going to be the magnitude of a times the sine of theta and then we're going to multiply that by b and that is the magnitude of the uh, a cross b which is c now the direction is determined by the right hand rule and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your right hand you can't use your left hand uh, it doesn't work very well with your right hand you get exactly the wrong answer uh, you're going to take your the way i do it is uh, I take my hand and I point it in the direction of the first vector, in this case A. And then I'm going to bend my fingers in the direction of B. Now, I can't really bend them that way, so I'm going to need to turn my hand like that and go A cross B, all right, A. And I'm going to bend my fingers in the direction of B. B's down there, A cross B. My thumb will point in the direction of C. So this is the magnitude of C, and the direction is... I'm going to use the uh, arrow convention, and C is into the board. We're going to use the arrow con convention. X means into the board, or whatever the plane is. And a dot means out, coming at you, out of board. And the way this works is that it's like an arrow. You know, if someone's shooting an arrow, you, you, you just see the, the dot of the arrow coming at you, right? Um, but if it's going away from you, you see the crosshairs. You see away, you see the feathers, and coming towards you, you just see the little pointy uh, front of the arrow. All right. So, uh, so this would be a sine of b into the board, right? That would be a cross b. Let's say we had, uh, so let's say we had vector a um, like that, and we had vector b like that and let's say this is 120 degrees between a and b so what is a cross b right well first let's uh, do the easy part um what direction is a cross b now this isn't the easiest way for me to actually intuitively see um what the direction of a cross b um, I find it easier to see the direction if I draw them tail to tail we draw this like this I go a and then b is like that right same thing I just moved vector you can always move vectors um, so and then I have some angle there um, but anyways so um, a cross b now it's kind of easy I'm going to go a cross B so the direction is going to be out of the board I'm going to put the direction down first out of board I don't know what the magnitude is yet out of board that's going to be its direction it's going to be right at you right out of the board A cross B all right um so uh what's the magnitude well I want to know this I'm going to multiply um, this component of B I'll call it B perpendicular um, I'm going to do that and uh, let's see that's 90 degrees so this must be 30 degrees right here 30 degrees and uh, so this is going to be A times B and uh, 30 degrees there is that angle and I want this component that's a cosine of 30 degrees a B cosine 30 degrees in this case right I wanted to take a and multiply it by this component of B and uh, I got a right triangle here uh, this is B so B perpendicular would be B cosine uh, 30 degrees and that's out of the board that's not written very well at all let me write that a little clear this is gonna be on YouTube you gotta make sure you're looking good on YouTube you can get all kinds of likes. Want to avoid those snarky comments that you get from the internet. Let me ask you a question. 
Why don't you figure this out right now? Does A cross B equal B cross A? Does A cross B equal B cross A? Why don't you figure that out? Pause the video now. Come on along with the black rider. We'll have a gay old time. All right, so you had a few minutes. Hopefully you figured that out. Let's see. A cross B. A cross B is out of the board, but B cross A, B cross A is into the board. They are not the same thing. And in fact, they're in the opposite direction. The magnitudes would be the same, but they'd be in opposite direction. So A cross B does not equal B cross A. They, uh, so be careful with that. The order you do that is uh, important. And in fact, um, on the last uh, quiz or one of the quizzes earlier, um, you know, I've been saying that torque I've been using this shorthand without going into details. A torque equals R cross F, right? Um, uh, a number of people have been saying that torque equals F cross R, and it doesn't. Um, it's R cross F. The, the order is incredibly important. Um, it changes the direction if you have the order wrong. All right, let's draw a Cartesian coordinate system. Now, for some reason, I have no idea why, I'm not really a math guy. Um, when we draw a three-dimensional uh, coordinate system, so I'm going to kind of draw it like this, and, and we're going to try and draw perspective like that. Um, so this is kind of out of the board. Um, they, uh, in math books and all that, and uh, I think in your physics book too, they, they tend to make the Z up here and the X here and the Y here. I don't know why they flipped it, because usually if you write two dimensions... Y is straight up, but uh, for some reason they flipped it around. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a good reason. And I don't know what it is. But anyways, um, so um, I'm going to draw the unit vectors. I think I'll use red. Let's see if that'll work. All right, there's my unit vector. Uh, that's I. And uh, in the Y direction, it's J. And then we got the unit vector k. And remember, they, they have a value of 1, a magnitude of 1. And uh, this is along the x-axis, this is along the y, and that's along the z. Um, so uh, let's try a few. Uh, oh, and if you'll notice that uh, when, the way we usually draw our Cartesian coordinate system, it is a right-handed coordinate system uh, in that um, i cross j equals k. You can tell if you've written it right, if you've drawn it right. Uh, using the standard conventions, if uh, I cross J uh, equals K, I cross J does equal K in this case. So I've drawn correctly. I've done a fine job uh, of doing that. I want you to try this. What is I cross J cross I? What is I cross and, and let me uh, let me do that. What is that equal? Why don't you give that a try? Pause the video now. All right, you had a moment. Let's see. Hopefully you got that right. I cross J. Okay, uh, they're all value 1, so we're going to end up with the magnitude's going to be 1. We're just trying to figure out the direction. Um, I, I cross J equals K. All right, so... Uh, I cross J is K, all right? So this right here, that's K. Um, and then K, K cross I, all right? K cross I, it looks like this equals J. K cross I equals J, yes. All right, how about uh, K cross I? What is K cross I equal? Pause the video now. Something is not right with me. Something is not right with me. Something is not right with me. How was I supposed to know? All right. K cross I. K cross I. It looks like it equals J. J. K cross I equals J. What is a K cross I? J equal. Let's see. K cross J. It looks like it's negative I. Negative I. 
K cross K cross J. Yeah, it's into the board. All right, K cross J is negative I. Let's try uh, some complex vectors which are in uh, component forms. Let's see what we got here. Let's say that A is, uh, what do I got? Minus 4i uh, plus j. And let's say b is uh, 2i plus 4j minus 3k. So what is a cross b? What does that equal? What's a cross b if that's a and b? Well, we're going to multiply these together like we normally did. Do, um, we're going to say that uh, we're going to take uh, minus 4i plus 1j and cross that with 2i plus 4j minus 3k. All right. So we're just going to go, we're going to cross this with that. And what do we get? Uh, I times I is zero. All right. They're in the same direction. There is no right angle component where you uh, multiply a I vector times an I vector. They're in the same direction. Um, all right. No right angle component. Um, now when I go here, uh, this one's going to be zero. Uh, I cross J. This is going to give me some sort of K value. Um, all right. So that's going to be 16 and it's going to be k. Um, and uh, let's see, we had uh, negative i, which is this way, right, crossed with j, and that's going to be negative k. That's going to be negative k. All right, and then we're going to multiply this one. i cross k is going to give me some sort of j thing. Uh, we'll figure out the sign in a second. That's going to be a j thing. Uh, let's see, the magnitude is going to be 12. Um, we had uh, negative 4i, uh, that's this way, and uh, negative, uh, so we had negative uh, 4i and uh, negative 3k, so that's going to give me a negative j, something like that. All right, let's take these j things, so we're going to multiply that. Uh, that's going to be a k. J cross uh, I is going to give you some sort of K value. Um, all right, so I got uh, uh, J this way, and uh, I'm going to cross it with I. So I'm going to go like that. That's going to be negative K, uh, negative uh, 2K, right? Negative 2K, right? I had uh, uh, J. Cross I is negative K. And then we got like that. Uh, that's going to give me a zero right there. J cross J is zero. And then we go like that. And uh, we got J cross K. That's going to give me some sort of um, I like that. And let's see what we got. We got J is positive. J and then we had minus k is going to give me a negative i, negative 3i. All right. a cross b equals all that stuff, minus 3i, uh, minus 12j, and uh, minus uh, 19k. All right. That's A cross B. All right, that's the uh, vector cross product. Um, it's not too complicated. Uh, those of you who are taking, who, those of you doing linear algebra, um, there's an efficient way to do this with matrices, um, and you may have done some of that before. Uh, the idea is that we're going to uh, just multiply the right angle components together and uh, we're going to determine the direction using the right-hand rule. I know uh, thus far we've been using positive and negative, um, but this is a better way to unambiguously determine the direction because, um, the re like with torques, uh, the result is another vector, and counterclockwise isn't really a direction, right? It's, uh, it's a description of how something is going 
uh, and it's rotating. Um, it's not really a vector. Uh, so, anyway, that's that. See ya. It's